and welcome back. This is Baller Scooper with another StarCraft 2 commentary. In my upcoming match, this is my opponent. His name is Rear Admiral. He is a, wow, ranked one number in his goal division, Sarengo Alamo, with 1,797 points. His record is 278 and 290. So here we are in the game. I am the Red Terran in the east-ish, 2 o'clock position maybe 2.30-ish, up against Rear Admiral. He is a blue Zerg player in the kind of northeast 12.30, 1 o'clock position. Uh, not very good at identifying clocks. Oh, four straight losses. Oh, that sucks, man. I've been there, especially against a Zerg player, so I kind of wanted to cheer him up and kind of lower his expectations for this game. And so after a while, I do answer, that's all right, I have that against Zerg lately. And after I typed it, I realized I wasn't very clear. I meant that I had a, a four... Um, uh, uh, four straight losses against the Zerg players, that is what I meant. And look at that. Oh, Zerg need a buff. Oh, I... Uh, yeah, 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 I don't think they do, but... Um, I usually don't let my uh, games influence whether or not I need... Uh, the entire race needs a, a buff or a nerf or anything like that. And he does have an overlord here. Uh, send it almost immediately in. Can he see... Um, no, he cannot see from there that I actually did spawn here, so a little bit lacking in the Overlord placement, so it will cost him. He still hasn't... Oh, there we go. He did... He was able to see my base, uh, and that was enough. He just automatically sent the Overlord out. Doesn't want me to realize that's where he came from, but of course my SCV going in should reverse that Overlord. I do see everything that's going on here, and I do see that spawning pool in the back. Don't see that gas going up, so we are going to be seeing a quick gas uh, that typically means speedlings or banelings, um, but definitely no hatchery out right now, and that is something that I always want to prevent if possible, and it does look like I'm slacking on my macro here, uh, not getting anything in my main base because I am focused on microing this SCV. Oh, it does look like that um, barracks did go up, so I should be getting Orbital Command. It is going now. Getting that first Marine and a Supply Depot to try to block off because of oh, this close of spawn position with the Zerg players. I'm always scared of a Zergling rush and always want to finish that block off. Uh, first Marine is out. He should be able to handle up to about six Zerglings all by himself if I do finish off the block off. Two Zerglings did pop out, killing my SCV. But it doesn't look like they're going to be going for the attack here. They are going to be staying in the base, just watching the ramp, make sure I'm not doing anything too crazy. I do have a second barracks going up with a, that uh, supply Depot finishing the block off here. Reactor going down on the first barracks, so we are not going to be seeing anything out of the usual for me here. Uh, this is a very small map, so I'm going to stick with my three racks. I always like to do the early pressure, especially against Zerg players, on a map where we do have spawning positions this close together. Uh, we do see an early Roach Warren and a bailing nest, so we're going to be seeing split tech here. I can't say I agree with that. It would be the same as if I started going for uh, a factory and a starport on one base um, when really I didn't have any, you know, when I already had a, a few uh, marines out. He does have a couple zerglings out. Uh, looks like just six. Um, so we are even in the army count, uh, but of course, uh, really neither one of us can attack and do anything. If I attack and these Zerglings are able to surround me, these Marines should go down. And of course, he cannot attack in here because I uh, do have the block off. So um, really, neither one of us has any significant advantage, even at the, the almost the six minute mark of the game. So you don't really need to be too scared uh, about early rushes, um, I always think that, you know, once it hits about the five minute mark, that there could be an attack, and there very well could, but it's not going to be something significant. Um, what is going on here? We do have 
banelings be morphed in. They are fully morphed in, along with roaches. Uh, so he's got an even three, three, three. It looks like yes, three zerglings, three roaches, and three banelings, uh, fully, just fully spread out there. And doesn't look like they've got any upgrades. Nothing being researched. Uh, he did research Zergling speed, I did catch that, but that is it, and really speed's not going to be that good of an upgrade for just three Zerglings, you know? It's, it, if he had maybe ten Zerglings, definitely the speed uh, will play a significant role, but just three Zerglings, I don't really see it. But we do see a spread of Overlords all around between our two bases and that is a great play he wants to make sure i don't go for the banshees around uh the back but then again he hasn't really gotten any scouting done inside my base so he doesn't know that i have been going uh, mass marines and marauders and i do have quite a significant lead in the army count if you ask me and i am going for a push here it looks like but he did get a few roaches out and it is a lot closer than i think it is at this time and a nidus network is on the way so these overlords are going to be going are going to be giving him sight so that he can go for a, a, a nidus network i would assume that it goes down in here that is uh the best spot for a nidus network and i did not scout it and i didn't build anything there to make sure nothing went up there but i am moving in for the attack taking out an overlord and it doesn't quite supply lock him and all the banelings exploding. It doesn't look like they got any damage done on the marines or the marauders. Uh, so just not enough was done to finish the job. The Nidus Worm is up and roaches are en route, I do believe. Uh, but really, I'm going into the base and I'm just so surprised. This is probably why he has a losing streak. Nothing's being done here. Um, I, I don't see anything in my base. I do see that there is a Nidus Worm. Oh, he sent a ton of his drones in there. And as the Zerglings popped out, he's looks like he's settling for a base race here. He wants um, everything to come in. And no, I don't see the creep yet. I, I'm just not paying attention to my mini-map. And all of a sudden, holy crap, there's a whole bunch of drones in my base. So I stop a couple of my reinforcing troops, but apparently not all of them, as these guys are still heading there. And I start going back uh, to wipe out what's going on. I, I, I take all my SCVs, you know, uh, hit A and move them out here. That way, they once one thing dies, they don't just stop attacking. I, I did forget how to do that in the early game. Now it looks like he's going for a second hatchery inside my base. I... I don't know what's going on here. He cannot win this game at this point. Even with the Nidus network and all my SCVs down, I just do not care. And there is one particular reason why. Any one of these, right, can be lifted off. And he has no anti-air. He sent no anti-air through. It was... Well, well, I did have an early pushing, um, early harassment build with that three three racks that I sent everybody out and once those were there it really was game over for him and the Nidus even though he he had started building it before I moved out it was a desperation build I don't know why he started going for it and really to stick with it was really just him trying to be des you know to, to stick with it um, but really you cannot do a, a Nidus with with roaches and drones and zerglings and assume that i'm not going to win my th the game with you know what i have inside your base and the simple reason is that none of them can attack air and i can lift these things off that's the simple simple answer for it um i will always win that and i think he figured that out um but i had plenty to to, to finish what was left in my base anyways. Uh, so that was the game. Um, 
that was interesting the first time that we've seen a Nidus Network on my channel, as far as I can remember, um, which is always something I want to show you if I see a new strategy, whether it worked or whether it didn't, I want to show it to you. This one did not work due to the timing. It was uh, too late, um, and it, by that time I had a significant army. He, if he had done some scouting, he would have known that and probably not have built it. Uh, built it, it. But the, the overlords were out of position. They were guarding um, any, so that he would have been able to see any air coming in. But really, he had no anti-air in his base and wouldn't have been able to get anything up. So just just an interesting strategy. So I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Bye.